Everyone loves a good story and a good storyteller. But there is no storyteller like the Lord Jesus, and there are no greater stories told than the ones Jesus shared. In this study, Spiritual Stories, we consider the parables Jesus told and their application to us. These are truly the greatest stories ever told, and the Lord has something He wants to say to you through them. Let's join Scott Pauley now. Have you RSVP'd? Have you RSVP'd to the most important invitation you have ever received? I'm not talking about some earthly celebration, some graduation gathering or a wedding or baby shower. Those are all wonderful. But friend, I want you to know there is a banquet being planned by our Lord himself at the Father's house and nobody spreads a table like Jesus spreads a table. But you have to respond. Now, you're not just going to show up there someday. The invitation has been given. The preparation has been made, but you must respond to him. This is the point of the parable we've come to now in Luke chapter 14. Remember, this is Jesus' table talk. He's sitting at the house of one of the chief of the Pharisees, eating bread on the Sabbath day. He's told two parables already, one to the guest and the other to the host, And then we come to verse number 15. The Bible says, And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. So the third parable here around the table is really a conversation with one of the guests, with one man. He strikes up a conversation with the Lord Jesus. Perhaps this man was very sincere and wanted to talk about spiritual things. He sounds spiritual. Or maybe because he's in the house of the Pharisees, this man just wants to impress everybody with his spirituality. But either way, Jesus turns the conversation to deeply spiritual things. He really moves from dealing with earthly hospitality. That's what the previous parables have been about, how you treat others, and why you do what you do. He moves from earthly hospitality to a heavenly setting now, literally to his table. Let me read the story to you beginning in verse 16. Uh, Then said he unto them, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. Now, let me pause and point out, uh, this is the, the same list that he gave a moment ago to the host. So he's going to, to the least. He's going to the, the broken among them. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. So he tells a story about a man who makes a great supper, invites lots of people, and they just don't come. They they make excuses. They send their cordial regrets. Now, that may sound all right, except when you realize that the Lord is the one who's made the supper. The Lord is the one who's given the invitation. And uh, who's he invited? Well, the gospel is to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So the primary emphasis here is on the fact uh, that he has brought the good news to the Jewish nation. And by and large, they have rejected it. So what's he going to do? He's going to turn to the Gentiles. Uh, We find ourselves in this passage. We are uh, the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. Uh, We are those who are not a part of the nation of Israel, and yet, thanks be unto God, because of his grace and mercy, he's made a way that we too can come to the supper. Aren't you glad? Have you RSVP'd? Uh, Do you have your reservation? Do they have a place setting ready for you at the Father's house, at the banquet table, because there's a big gathering 
being prepared as we speak. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Oh, yes, the Lord is preparing and we must prepare. I ask again, have you RSVP'd? What's the interpretation of this story? Well, the interpretation is that men are called uh, to what God has prepared. The Lord makes all the preparation of salvation. The Lord makes all the preparation of eternal life. The Lord makes all the preparation of heaven. And he calls us to himself, but we must respond to him. And if I might point out, we must respond rightly. These people responded, but they responded with excuses. Away with excuses. Are you making excuses? What's your excuse for not trusting Jesus as your Savior? What is your excuse? He's done everything for you. He gave his son for you. What's your excuse for the delay? What's your excuse for running from God? Uh, there are three excuses identified here. Uh, the first man said, well, I, I bought a piece of ground. I need to go check on it and see it. Uh, that was silly. Nobody would buy a piece of ground without looking at it. Not in that society, for sure. Uh, but the point is that the first excuse was possessions. Maybe possessions are keeping you from saying yes to the Lord. Uh, then the second man said, well, I bought a yoke of oxen. I need to go try them out, prove them. Uh, maybe it's not your possessions. Maybe it's your occupations. Maybe you're consumed with doing something. It really doesn't matter in the scheme of eternity. You're going to miss the supper, friend. The third man, we, we joke about it, but he said, I've married a wife and I cannot come. Uh, don't blame your wife. The excuse here is relations. It's kind of like Adam saying, the woman you gave me, she's the one who gave me this fruit. No. No, you had a choice to make. Is it your possessions? Is it your occupations? Is it your relations? Whatever it is, do away with those excuses because none of them will stand on that day. So that's the interpretation. The revelation is that Christ is the great preparer and the great inviter. He's prepared everything, and then did you hear his favorite word, come? We know this is our Lord, come, inviting. All things are now ready. Come to Jesus. I will tell you, at the end of the story, that the house is going to be full, but you may miss it. Uh, the Lord is going to fill his house with those who will receive the truth. Even now, people are responding to the gospel. Have you responded? Even now, people have come to Jesus. Have you come to Jesus? And so it brings us to the great application. And the great application, of course, though we're not Israel, is that we must come to Christ. Uh, read Revelation. Read Revelation 19. There's a great marriage supper being planned. A great banquet such as you've never seen being planned. And the only ones who will be there are those who have come to Christ. If you want to go to heaven, come to Jesus. If you want to be there on that day, around that table, in the Father's house, then you must make certain now of your soul's salvation. Oh, I just want to tell you that the greatest provision and the greatest privilege of your life and of all eternity is to sit at his table. It's wonderful. Uh, remember, a table is always a picture of fellowship. This is not just about being someplace. It's about being with someone. We're not just talking about going to heaven. We're talking about being with him, to, to sit, to commune with him, to enjoy him. Now, you can fellowship with him today. Remember, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and will sup with him and he with me. You let the Lord into your heart and life today. You'll enjoy his fellowship now, and then when you leave this world, you go to his house to enjoy his fellowship forever. You know you can't beat being a Christian. He comes uh, to, to feed with you now, to enjoy fellowship with you now, and you get to sit at his table for all eternity. All things are ready. I wonder, have you RSVP'd? The parables of the Lord Jesus Christ hold tremendous truth and application to us today. And to help you in this study, we encourage you to visit our website, enjoyingthejourney.org, where Scott has prepared a reading guide to the parables that you can download and use. On our website, you will find many helpful tools and resources to help you in your walk with the Lord. Every sermon, each study, all of our resources are for the purpose of following God's Word and finding Christ's joy.